I purchased the Mac Mini M1 16 gigabit model a year ago. It has been my daily workhorse and the heart of this YouTube channel. Using this machine for the past year, I've had some impressive wow moments and I've had moments of frustration, specifically when editing 4K for YouTube. Let's talk about it. First, I will say even with the Mac Studio and M2 releases, I honestly can say the Mac Mini M1 is more than capable of all the things I've thrown at this, which for some might be a lot, and for some professionals, they may need way more horsepower based on their own personal workflows. I use this machine for basic office apps, mail, Zoom meetings, lots of web surfing, editing audio for the Elevate Project podcast, and the most taxing application I throw at this is Final Cut Pro video editing 4K footage for this YouTube channel. And a video version of the podcast available through my Patreon page, and we'll have all the links below if interested to help support the channel. We're going to go over what I love about the Mac Mini M1 and the things that frustrate me with the Mac Mini M1 and stay till the end to find out what I am going to do with this Mac Mini M1, keep it, or if I'm going to upgrade between the Mac Studio or a new Mac with M2. Starting with what I love even after a year of consistently editing 4K videos, it is whisper quiet. I honestly haven't heard the fans go on, even when I am taxing this machine with multiple footage, adding in transitions, or color grading. For context, I use a Sony ZV-E10 in 4K at 24 frames per second in 8-bit, and when I first got this camera, I loved the color out of the box. I used the standard profile and had zero, I mean zero issues, scrubbing through footage, making edits, and boom, I was happy. Then I started to play around with color grading and purchased a Sigma 16 millimeter and a 30 millimeter lens, still shooting in 4K, 24 frames per second. And now I consistently shoot in the camera picture profile 10 in HLG2. Again, with straight footage and a corrective LUT, it works out perfect, scrubs through timelines and no issues, no noticeable hiccups, and basic color grading with the built-in Final Cut Pro tools, minor issues from time to time, if any. This same process on my MacBook Pro 2016 15-inch, the fans go crazy and takes time to render and scrub through some of the footage. It works, but not the funnest experience when editing 4K, and the fans are just too much. I use OBS Studio for the video version of my video podcast. Check it out on my Patreon page. The link is in the description. And on my MacBook Pro, the fans are so loud. Some wow moments for me with the Mac Mini M1. No issues in OBS, specifically for recording. Some really great wow moments that honestly have made the video editing process in 4K on this Mac Mini M1 an easier learning curve, and a fun experience. One thing that has changed my video editing is using plugins from motionfx.com. The transitions and intros all work great with no hiccups or issues on the Mac Mini. If you are interested to check out MotionFX and the main plugins I use will be in the links in the description below. And it will also help support the channel. I absolutely love Motion FX and personally has made editing videos more fun and has helped me to be more creative. Quick disclaimer, I have never used Adobe Premiere on this machine or DaVinci Resolve, so I can't speak to the performance of video editing 4K with any other editing program except Final Cut Pro. If you found value so far, hit the like button. Okay. Let's switch gears to share my moments of frustration. The Mac Mini M1 integrates the CPU and the GPU in one chip. That is great, except the GPU seems to be limited and doesn't work flawlessly with my 49-inch Samsung Odyssey G9. It will flicker from time to time, and I have changed resolutions, fresh rate, and I still get this screen tearing effect that is annoying when I am editing 4K. I've been able to avoid it most of the time. When it happens, it is super frustrating. 
I thought maybe it was the Odyssey G9, but when connected to my MacBook Pro 2016 with a dedicated GPU, the monitor is flawless with no issues. Another frustrating issue is with third-party plugins outside of Motion FX, specifically Color Finale. When I am color grading my footage without Color Finale, no issues. With Color Finale, if I push the color grade, it crashes, especially when I'm doing later. And I have to restart the program. When it does work, it's fine if I finish the project in one sitting. If I don't finish that project and jump back in later, I lose some functionality of Color Finale, which is so frustrating. I don't know if it's just taking up lots of resources. It might be different if I had more RAM, but you can't upgrade RAM on the Mac Mini M1, especially that I have it maxed out with 16 gigabytes. This is kind of a minor issue as I get more comfortable with color grading with the Final Cut Pro built-in tools and easier to deal with once you know the limitations. The other frustrating part when I'm exporting my final file from Final Cut Pro, I literally just have to let it do its thing and not do anything else. If I start multitasking, it starts to be really sluggish to the point it's unusable. Very frustrating when there are other things I need to get done. Luckily, I still have my MacBook Pro and will work on anything specific that isn't needed from my Mac Mini. Knowing this, I'll usually export at a time I know I will not be using the Mac Mini for a bit like dinner time. My normal YouTube videos aren't that long, so the export times aren't bad. The video podcast where I'm exporting 25 plus minutes can take some time. Now, compared to my MacBook Pro 2016, the Mac Mini M1 is faster. Thank you for staying till the end. Overall, I do love this machine for editing, doing all the things I do on a daily as I make more videos and increase the amount of video content with shorts and other platforms. I've been thinking about upgrading or getting another machine alongside this one. I've been thinking about the Mac Studio and watching for new Mac releases with the M2 chip. I've decided for now that even with the frustrations, I'm perfectly fine and this meets my needs. And for now, the Mac Studio and the M2 releases are just wants and good to haves. Luckily, I still have my MacBook Pro if you are looking to decide between a Mac Mini M1, the Mac Studio, or an M2 Mac depending on your workflow, the Mac Mini M1 is more than capable and certainly for my workflow. If you found value in this video, you know what to do. If you like the content like this one, watch these two videos over here. Be safe, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.